Welcome everyone here to the Smash Sports Show right here on Smash FM here on Lockdown Thursday here in Melbourne. Of course, let's go to our friends over in South Australia in particular, of course, go to the defending champions uh, in the NPL at the moment. Of course, that is LA City and of course, uh, they continue their rise up the ladder at the moment. Of course, after a bit of a stop-start season, it's been so far in 2020, but uh, of course, we've got a very special guest on the show. Of course, her name's Danielle and she joins us uh, right now from Adelaide. Thanks, Danielle, for joining us. Hi, how are you? Thanks for having me. No worries. Well, a uh, bit of an unusual year for everyone, and especially, obviously, for your season, of course, uh, had a bit of a stop-start uh, season so far. Um, how yeah. have you coped with the unusual year? Um, obviously, yeah, it was a very different year, a shock to the system, I think. Um, the world kind of just stopped. Um, especially when they said we can't play football. <laughs> I was just like, well, what am I going to do with my life, you know? Um, I think we, I don't know, we coped quite well. Um, there wasn't really much we could do about it. Um, it's hard to, when you can't control it. Um, but I think the girls, you know, they still had um, a goal in mind um, to all, you know, focus on doing something during the <laughs> off period especially we didn't know how long it would be. Um, but, you know, I think everyone still kept fit and whatnot. Once the season was postponed um, for, for the first time, I guess, yeah. what was your feeling like about, did you felt that the season was ever going to go ahead again? Um, I had doubts. I mean, when it got, like, really bad from the start, I was like, no, nah, this year is definitely not going to, not going to happen. Um, but then uh, when it started, you know, started to get a bit clearer here in SA, um, I, I was feeling more confident that it would go on. Um, obviously, things were going to be different. Um, but um, yeah, we just had to prepare for the, for the worst or the best. Uh, obviously, with the resumption, uh, which has happened, um, it I guess, how good is it to go back to sort of normal in regards to playing-wise? Um, it was kind of hard to get back into it, especially the physical side of it, um, especially because we, um, we couldn't play contact games or anything. So it was basically just passing and um, just trying to stay fit and everything else. So we were kind of we were kind of scared to go into the first game because we hadn't done anything physical for at least eight weeks or so. Um, so we just had to, you know, go into it. Um, we didn't really go into it as much as we would want, wanted it. After the first game, what was the nerves like around the team going to that first game after the resumption? And um, I guess after the game, was it more relief that, you know, you've got through the fears of, um, that he's had pre-game? Um, yeah, so it was definitely one to get out of the system. Um, I think we did play Metro and I think, oh, actually we, I think we played Comets and um, it was nice to get it out of the way. Um, we were confident to, you know, keep continuing to, um, you know, push from there. Now, still sitting on top of the ladder, um, still the team to beat. Obviously, you've got West Adelaide joining you at the moment, uh, which is going to be a big game uh, this weekend, uh, which we'll talk a bit yeah. about in just a moment. But uh, obviously, you also have to play a midweek game. Uh, or well, sorry, early in the week game, actually, was. I think it's the, the Knockout Cup uh, game. Um, yeah. I guess, uh, how did you go during the week? Um, and I guess... It, it, was it sort of going back to normal of, in regards to you playing a knockout game and then you playing the Premier League game again? Um, yeah, it was a very tough week. Um, we knew um, it was going to be tough. Um, but again, we just had to, you know, recover from the Friday night game. Um, we had to recover well on the Saturday. Um, we all went, we went to the beach in the freezing weather <laughs> to recover um, and just make sure we were... Uh, fit for the Monday night game. Um, uh, we are quite a fit team, so we did bounce back, and um, I think it was our fitness that got us over the line on that Monday night. Um, it was a very tough game. 
Um, it always is against our rivals, but it's the best feeling when, when we knock them out the first round. So it was good. Now, of course, Danielle, prior to your Premier League game last week, of course, you had to uh, do a very special event, uh, which was uh, done by Football South Australia, which involved uh, at least one representative from every Premier League team. Uh, I was in part yep. of the Women's in Football uh, initiative there in South Australia. For you, how special was that and how important was that for you to attend to that, and especially with school holidays over there in SA? Yeah, well, um, yeah, it was an honour to be asked to to attend that um, that Matilda's party um, and the school holidays um, association. Um, it was it was good. Like there was so many young, um, you know, talented athletes um, up and coming, I should say. Um, and I was surprised to see so many girls, so many young girls, striving to become you know, one of us or one of, you know, a Matilda's, they have dreams like when I was a little kid and it just, it really, um, yeah, it really stemmed back to when I was growing up. Um, I didn't really have any of these pathways. So to attend one of those, um, yeah, it was, it was great to see so many young athletes. Now, I know that obviously he's a rivals on, uh, on the field, but obviously been there, um, the whole Premier League teams um, involved in this. Um, I guess yeah. to sort of have a chat, you know, just a friendly chat to each other at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's always um, a bit of banter off off the pitch. Um, you know, um, you can't really always be serious, can you? But when it's on the pitch, it stays on the pitch, um, which is what is good with um, females um, with sport in general um i mean what stays on the pitch stays on the pitch um and then it's friendly off the pitch as i mentioned we'll go to that west air lake game this week uh, a critical game for both teams especially for your team to stay on top of the ladder and obviously being the hunted yet again this year um yeah. again, how has the team cope with um the situation in regards to um obviously facing up against one of your one or two of your rivals um throughout this competition um and How's this week been like? Um, it's like any other week. We know we have to prepare. Um, we take every game as it comes. So um, whether it's West Adelaide, where, whether it's a different team, um, we know what job we we have to do. Um, the girls, we've all been together for uh, three or so years now. So we all know um, how to play together and you know, if we do go down one nil, we know how to get back. We've we've all got a very good winning mentality. So, um, yeah, I feel like um, we've prepared the best we can, and we just go out there and do what we can. Uh, and how special will it be to uh, you know remain on top of the ladder? Obviously, uh, only had the one loss so far. Um, obviously, you joined with as I mentioned with Adelaide, with Adelaide obviously Salisbury. Uh, right breathing down your necks uh, at the moment. Uh, so how special will it be to knock them out of a uh, top spot? Oh, very special. Um, we, yeah, it's always, like I said, it, it's always a rival team. So um, to get that top spot, um, it's always something special. I know every other team is always out to get us. Um, so it is that added pressure um, always. But uh, like I said, if, if we... If, if it is a loss, we play them again. So, you know, we, we always um, are confident when we go into a team like that. Now, obviously, great news, obviously, it was announced a couple of weeks ago in regards to the World Cup being here in Australia. Uh, and obviously, there's going to be a couple of games over in Adelaide um, in 2023. When the announcement happened, um, what did that mean to you, or, but especially... Um, the team. What did that all mean to the community of Adelaide to know that uh, the Women's World Cup is going to be here in Australia? Oh, it, it's it's amazing. Um, honestly, we've never had something like this. Um, I think as a football community, um, it's it's really it's nothing but there's nothing better. Um, you know, it, it unites the world. It unites everyone. It, it brings people together. Um, you know, um, I think it would get 
more girls playing soccer, which is what I think um, needs to happen. Um, if this didn't happen, I feel like, yeah, it would still just be a men's game kind of kind of aspect. So um, it's good in that way um, for aspiring young athletes. And have you all started to see a lot of girls, obviously you mentioned about the clinic just a moment ago, but have, have you sort of started to see a lot of girls getting more interested in the sport since that announcement? Yeah, definitely. I think so. Yeah. Um, they're like the Matildas they're, and all female athletes, they, they are, you know, just as um, inspiring as, you know, the men um, that are playing. So I think it, it definitely would get a lot more people, uh, girls in general playing. Of course, your team is the most amazing football team I've seen. And I would say it's definitely made a lot of teams down here in, uh, in Victoria. Um, for you, tell us how special is it to be part of that team and especially um, playing alongside some amazing names. Obviously, one of them everyone knows over there is, uh, is Dylan Holmes. Uh, tell us how special it is to play alongside her. Um, so I've been playing with Dylan for a while now. Um, and... Uh, we've got a great relationship on and off the pitch. Um, she's a great, she's a great um, athlete, um, very humble. Um, yeah, it's, it's very good to see her really stepping up and um, she is a leader now. So um, I think this year she's really stepped up um, into that leadership role um, and, you know, really inspiring other people to, you know, keep going and, um, yeah, it's, it, she's, yeah, she's great. Now, for you, Daniela, how did you get involved in the sport of the world game? Why did you choose it? <laughs> um, I, I honestly didn't really choose it. I was born into a soccer family or a football family, I should say. So, um, yeah, my mum was kind of playing soccer when I was in her stomach. Um, so, I, yeah, I was born into it. Um, my uncles played, my great grandfather played for Juventus and um, Australia. Uh, so it's really in my blood. Um, I, I live it, breathe it, everything. Um, I'm just involved in a very soccer crazy family, I should say. Um, so yeah, I didn't really have a choice. I was always at trainings um, with my mum and dad coaching. Um, I was growing up with my boy cousins. I was the first girl in the family. So everyone was just playing soccer. So I think I kind of just, yeah, had to play. <laughs> and it's stuck with me ever since. So I'm pretty grateful for it. And what position do you play on the field? And if you had a preferred position where you love to use your coaches to put you, where would that be? Um, I have been playing um, as a left winger. Um, probably that would probably be my preferred position. Um, I do play as an attacker, number 10, number 9. Um, but, yeah, probably out on the wing, um, setting up goals and scoring them. Now, you mentioned about being a striker. Uh, I was playing the 9 10 position. Um, is there a particular goal that you love the most throughout your journey so far? Um, throughout my journey, I always um, I love scoring headers. <laughs> because I'm quite short, no one really is, expects me to, you know, jump up and, you know, head of the ball or you know, in, in women's football, like no one really likes to header the ball. So when, when I score a header, like I just, it, it's just an amazing feeling, especially because um, Tim Cahill is um, my, my inspiration and he wears the number four, just like me. Um, so yeah, I, th I think um, always a header goal is just something that's special to me. Have you met him? Um, I have, and I have a photo with him. Ah. So, yeah, that was special. Now, obviously, I'm going to ask the most silliest question I'm going to ask. Obviously, I'm assuming your highlight is winning grand finals and LA City, City has won numerous of them in a row um, over yeah. there. Is there one thing <laughs> that stands out to you the most? 
Um, yeah, I would probably say uh, I did win um, the player of the year, the Shirley Brown player of the year in 2014 and 2016. Um, so they're probably my best um, years so far. Um, yeah, winning those um, awards is is pretty special to me. Um, yeah. And and not, and of course, on top of that premiership year, is there one premiership year that stands out to you? Um, I think um, definitely last year, um, winning the the triple. You can't get better than that. And it's, it's just the most amazing feeling. Um, everyone strives to, you know, win three, three cups. Um, and, you know, um, we've never done that before. So, um, yeah, it was very a very special year. And hats off to, you know, the, um, the coaching um, side and, and us girls for sticking to it. Consume um, what you've already achieved already um and and all that have you had a chance to sit down and reflect on uh what you want to do beyond um once we all get out of this um covid year um i haven't really reflected uh much um because like the the start of the year wasn't yeah it wasn't the best um uh, I haven't really, um, you know, thought about my next steps or anything, but I do just want to continue playing, um, playing the football I'm playing. Um, and yeah, we'll see where, where it takes me. And what does the sport of the world game mean to you? Obviously it's in the family, so it's in your blood. Um, yeah. What does it mean to you and especially being part of the most successful club uh, in South Australia? Yeah, so um, being being in, involved in Adelaide City really um, touches my heart. Like, it, it's it's a club of you know, uh, it's a community club. It's it's more than just a club. It's family, um, you know. And being involved in football, it's it's more than a game. Like, it's given me great opportunities. It's given me amazing friends, friends for life. You know, um, I've yeah been playing over 20 years now and I've become a motivated and determined ind individual just by you know being around the community and being involved in in football in general so yeah it's it's the world game is something very special to me and you would have played alongside some amazing players over in LA City throughout your time um I know you don't want to single anyone out, but uh, is there top five players that you played alongside with? It's hard to say. <laughs> it's hard. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't want to name names. <laughs> no, that's fair enough. Uh, <laughs> now, what would be your advice to anyone out there that should get involved in the world game? Oh, I mean, you know, like I said, like I touched on before, um, I've met amazing people through soccer so um yeah I think being involved in in sports brings brings communities together and it you know I think now is the time that um sport or you know you know the chosen sport is is um important uh, like I think you need to support them mostly now um like especially clubs um you know, because otherwise they would they would fold without the people there. Now let's finish up with a couple of lighthearted questions, which is now during isolation, um, and obviously when we all got into uh, lockdown. Um, yeah. What was? Did you get set any challenges? And if so, what was the funniest one? Um, no, we didn't really get set any challenges. Um, no, we. We didn't, I don't know, we didn't really, um, I didn't really, sp I didn't really speak to anyone in the team, to be honest, um, <laughs> which is pretty bad. Um, we, we, it was, <laughs> it was um, I don't know, I feel like I didn't really do much football-based stuff, so we didn't um, really connect much, um, as much as what we would like to have. Um, yeah, I was just catching up on sleep mainly, so. <laughs> <laughs> 
um, I work, I work shift work. So um, yeah, it was nice to catch up on sleep. Um, I think you pretty much answered my next question, as which, <laughs> which I'm going to ask you anyway. Which is, yeah, um, what did you do in isolation, and uh, did you do any sort of fitness or training at all? Um, so I didn't really touch a ball, which is uh, <laughs> not good. Um, maybe if it was out in the backyard, I would have, you know, touched it maybe twice or so. But honestly, I, I didn't really um yeah kick the ball at all um uh which is was different um i kind of just yeah catch uh, caught up on sleep um i started yoga uh which is something different for me <laughs> um i just wanted to try it out um and it was definitely a challenge um you know they said to you know challenge yourself um, so that was probably a big challenge for me to do yoga. And I think, well, like I really enjoyed it because it kept up with my physical, um, physical side of things. And yeah. Did you have a hidden talent that you thought you didn't have during isolation? Um, I can do headstands now. <laughs> oh. um, and I can do uh, like pretty good yoga poses, I think. Um, but I, yeah, I was just doing headstands mainly around the house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now who's the comedian in the team? Ah, uh, comedian. Uh, I would say Isabel Hodgson. She's always uh, a laugh. She's always the loud one around. Um, yeah, she's very, <laughs> very big presence in the team. So yeah. Uh, who's the best singer and dancer in the team? Oh, I probably, I'm probably biased, but I'm probably the best, uh, singer. <laughs> um, I haven't really heard anyone else. <laughs> um, I would say probably, uh, Macca is, um, Alice McCauley. She would probably be the best dancer. Now, obviously with the season already underway, I'm um, sure the team has some pump up songs to hype the team up. Who runs yep. the playlist and what's the worst song on it? Um, so it's only ever Chelsea Dorber. She runs it and you can't touch her phone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, yeah, she, she just, um, yeah, she takes over the music. Um, probably the worst song. Um, no, she actually, she, she's a good DJ. <laughs> she, she plays good music. So I wouldn't really say that she played a, a bad song. Um, now, any embarrassing moments so far by anyone this year? Um, not this year, um, but we definitely did have a lot um, last year. And um, at the start of the year, we did, Oh, we did have, um, it's called a wake-up, so everyone, um, <laughs> yeah, so um, it's a, a bright yellow top. So when someone did something stupid or funny um, during that week, they would um, wear that top to training and it's a bright yellow top. So um, there's, there's probably too many um, to name. <laughs> Uh, yes, I actually do remember that because Daphne uh, McLeod, who used to be at the City, has mentioned that. Yeah. So, did you ever get yourself stuck in that uh, in that shirt? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I can I can definitely say I did. I think I wore it maybe once or twice. <laughs> um, and of course, I'll finish up with two final ones. Do you have a pre-game ritual or superstition? Um, I have to, before a game, have to eat, um, quite well. So, um, I just have to have meat, um, <laughs> any sort of meat, uh, sweet potato and some beans always. Um, and, um, my mum always knows, uh, <laughs> how to cook it <laughs> before a game. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, nothing really much else before a game. Now, obviously, uh, you would have had some premiership celebrations. Um, this is the last question I'm going to ask. Um, you would have had some premiership celebrations, obviously, winning 
numerous premierships. What, how was the celebrations like and what was the best one out of the lot? Um, we did have a song um, last year. Um, it was, um, this is our city. So, um, oh, we built this city. Uh, we, so we remade the song. Uh, we built this city on black and white. So that was, that was a good song. And um, Grace Abbey uh, yes. thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> I thought Grace would uh, would make uh, would make one of those songs. Um, yeah. Um, well, Danielle, thank you so much for joining us. It's awesome having you on the show. Obviously, please send our best wishes to your team for us, uh, and uh, let's hope you can continue this amazing uh, winning streak you got at the moment. Obviously, you got West Adelaide, which is the battle for top spot, and uh, let's hope you can uh, beat them and remain on top of the ladder after seven games. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. No worries. And that's Danielle there from the LA City uh, Football Club. Of course, uh, if you want to get out there, of course, all the details will be on our um, social media very soon. Of course, that's the big game, LA City and West LA for top spot this weekend. So make sure you get out there and the black and white of LA City. More on the Smashboard right after this. Don't go away here on Lockdown Thursday.